Hi folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. In this video, I'm going to be talking about dive watches, depth gauges, dive tables, and dive computers. I think you're going to get a lot out of it, especially if you're unfamiliar with what's in a dive computer. Stick with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch a little bit on what dive tables are, what makes them work, how we utilize dive tables, and how they fit within dive computers. And hopefully if you're a new diver out there, you may enjoy this. And I'm going to use this PowerPoint here on the screen to help me walk through this. So let's take a look at it. So if we take a single dive, and if we look back when we were using dive tables, dive tables are based on two things. And those two things are max depth and max time down. Now your dive ends in all actuality as you begin to ascend to your safety stop. So this is what we call square profile diving. And of course, this is what the dive tables are based on. Now, I'm going to get to dive computers in just a minute. Let's look at our next slide. So in your logbook, this is what we see. Now, this is a blow up of this particular page of a dive log. And again, you're seeing square profile diving for one dive. And usually in your dive log, these dive log pages are broken into single dives. So when we go out and we're doing a, a, a charter, or normally when you go out diving, most of the time, not all, not all the time, but most of the time, what you're going to see on most dive charters is you're going to make two dives. And this right here on the screen represents your first dive, again, max depth, max time, your surface interval, how long you stayed up there, and your second dive. Now, in your computer, your computer has basically three phases it operates in. It operates in pre-dive or dive planning mode. So that would be here. And in your dive planning, you can use your uh, dive computer to figure out exactly what your no decompression limit is. Now, that decompression limit in your computer comes from a set of dive tables. Now this happens to be the SDI dive tables. I'm also going to be showing you a little bit about the Navy dive tables. And if you look on the thumbnail, you actually will see laying down underneath everything. Those are the PADI RDP recreational dive planner. And to the back, you're going to see the old PADI, the thing we used to call the wheel. Everything again is interconnected and is transferred into your computer. So pre-dive planning, once you get in the water, then just like with your dive watch, you would set your dive watch for the beginning of your dive time. Your computer knows you're diving, so it goes into dive mode. And you would track and you would actually see on the depth gauge, and I'm going to show, see if I can pull this up nice and close. On your depth gauge, there's an orange hand. Let me try to get this turn. There's an orange hand right over here. And what happens is this black hand pulls this orange hand up. And then as you begin to ascend, then the black uh, hand moves back down and the orange gauge hand stays in place, and that gives you what your max depth was. So you're able to annotate on your dive watch. When you begin your dive, you look at your dive watch and annotate when you end your dive, 
and your dive gauge gives you the information about your max depth. So you have your max time, max depth to annotate and work with a set of dive tables. Again, all of that is happening automatically in your dive computer. Now, when you come up and you make your safety stop, your computer gives you that information. It tracks and lets you know when that basic three minutes has passed by and says, okay, go ahead and go to the surface. Now, folks, please make safety stops, all right? They're helpful. And even though somebody may say, well, we're well within our no decompression limit, everybody's physiology is slightly different. Now, once you come up and you get on your surface interval, then your dive watch, you would be able to track how long you've been on your surface interval to do planning for your second dive. And of course, the computer knows you're now on the surface and as you plan your second dive using your dive computer, it knows that you're on your surface interval. It adjusts the amount of time because you're doing what we call off gassing. Talk about that a little bit more in a minute. It knows that you're off gassing while you're staying on that surface interval. And it gives you more time based on your second dive. And of course, that's what we see here. It also knows, and your dive tables know, what your residual nitrogen is from your first dive. Now, the best way I can explain it, so, and, and most people say, oh, that's kind of interesting way. If you take a soda, and of course a soda is carbonated, by putting the liquid under pressure and they squirt the CO2 in it. And some of you at home actually have your own carbonating machine. And that's what you're doing is you're, you're carbonating because you put that pressure against the uh, liquid and then you inject CO2 into it to carbonate and then you close up your, your drink. And that's exactly what's happening with your Sprite or your Pepsi or your whatever. So you close it up and now you've got a carbonated drink. So that's actually what's happening to us as we dive. We're not getting carbonated by CO2, but our, our bodies, our tissues, our fluids are taking on greater amounts of air because remember that additional pressure, then that is going into our liquids, our tissues. I don't want to get all complicated about tissue loading and all that sort of thing. But if you get into advanced diving and tech diving, you'll learn some stuff about that. I'm just going to say that your tissues begin to take on just like you're being carbonated. And of course, at the end of the dive, and we begin to go up, now that stop and it reverses. Now that, um, that gas starts moving out of your liquids and out of your tissues, back into your bloodstream, up to your lungs, and as you breathe out, you are off gassing. Now here's what I want you to remember. When you take that soda, and you pop the top and you pour that soda in a glass and you see those bubbles coming out. Now we actually see those. Those are not actually happening. We're called mi micro bubbles in our body. But what's happening is that soda is being exposed to a lesser pressure. And so the gas is actually coming out of the liquid and you're seeing it as bubbles. Now, think about this. If you leave that soda on the table for a while, what happens to it? It goes what we call, it, it goes flat. And what happens is after we dive, if we stay on our surface interval long enough, then we become flat. 
all right? We get rid and we completely off gas, and that can be tracked with dive tables, and it is also tracked, and your dive computer knows when you've been on your surface interval, whether it's after one dive, two dives, three dives, whatever, it knows when you become flat. All right, so what I've got on the screen here, these are the Navy dive tables up here, the US Navy dive tables. Down here is the PADI RDP, and that stands for Recreational Dive Planner. And what I'm gonna show you real quick is over here, these are what we call pressure groups. Up here are depths, and then down here are times. And this black row, that's your no decompression limit, okay? And this is the easiest way to see it. Little, little more difficult to see in the Navy. This is a little bit easier to see. So what I want you to think about is think about this no decompression of these black blocks. These are like a red light when you're driving, okay? So you see a red light, stop. Don't go through it, okay? If you go through it, then it can be hazardous to your health is probably the best way to think about it. Now, you're also going to see on this dive table, you're going to see a gray area. That's your yellow light, okay, or yellow light. I'm from Georgia, so you have to forgive me. But what you need to understand is that is saying, hey, caution, be careful. You're getting ready to go into your red light. Don't run your red light. So that is your yellow light. This area here that's white and blue, that's your green light, okay? And that's the easy way to think about it. Now, your dive computer is really cool because your dive computer knows where you are. You're able to use it pre-dive to do your planning so you know hey, I'm going to be going to 60 feet and I can stay down there within my NDL 52 minutes. And this, the cube computer tells you you're at 50 feet and you've been down X amount of time for your dive time and how much no deco time you have left. Now, some of these computers are actually air integrated so that when you look at them, you're getting a lot of information in one glance. If you've just got a regular dive computer, then you're gonna be glancing at your dive computer and of course, pulling up your air gauge. And of course, you should be checking with your buddy often about how much air you both have, all right? Because a lot of times we have to remember people use the standard 80 cubic foot tank now, uh, there's a lot of larger tanks out there that people are using. And of course, if you're using a larger tank, it is possible that you could possibly begin bumping up or even pass through that red light with a larger tank. And that's one reason I'm gonna encourage all of you divers out there to become nitrox certified. And just quickly, air, 60 feet, your NDL in general is 52 minutes. Nitrox 32 at 60 feet, your NDL is 90 minutes. So nitrox is a little bit like insurance in a bottle, all right? Makes it kind of simple. So let's look at the next slide. Okay, so this may be a little hard to, to see, but this is just a 30 foot dive and you can see the reality of how we dive. Okay, a little bit up, a little bit down. Maybe we stopped and took a picture. We always do the deepest part of our dive first and we move along. Like I said, this is just a 30 foot dive. So this is a long dive, it's like an hour. And so this gives us some understanding of what the reality of a dive is not just a square profile. That is dive tables. Today, we've got our dive computers on our wrist 
So it knows exactly where we go on the dive and it gives us credit for all of this uh, nitrogen in two that we did not accumulate. It gives us credit for that. So when we get ready to look at plan for our next dive, it knows how much residual nitrogen we have in our bodies, how long we've been on that surface interval, and helps us plan then the next dive. But I just wanted to show you the reality of a dive versus just a square profile. Today, we've got these cool things, especially utilizing some of these up-to-date computers where the computer connects with an app in your phone and you're actually able to download all of the information from your dive computer into the app and it actually stores all that information for you. And some of them are so advanced and even when you download some of the pictures from your GoPro or DJI or whatever it happens to be, the metadata in that will match up with your dive and in some of the apps, you'll actually be able to track your dive and know when that particular picture was made. It's very cool, very cool. So again, this shows our, our dives, our two dives, and of course, the dive computer is monitoring and giving us information at every facet of the dive. Again, pre-dive, dive, post-dive, post and of course post-dive is also pre-dive for the next dive. So when we come to dive planning, it doesn't have to necessarily be complicated. It can be very, very simple. In other words, who's leading the dive? Let's, uh, let's make a plan. Uh, we're gonna go down to that 50 foot reef. There's an airplane down there. We're gonna take pictures. We're gonna move along the reef taking pictures of, of fish and such at 1,000 PSI. We're gonna signal, okay, 1,000 PSI. Let's go up to our safety stop, okay? And we go up and we do our safety stop, we get back on the boat with plenty of air for our safety stop and to get home. So we also wanna make sure we're doing our pre-dive buddy checks and such as that, so we don't have any issues once we get in the water. So pre-dive planning is important and that gets you used to and paying attention with Hey, our dive tables, our dive computer, you're going to use those to know what your NDL is, okay? So hopefully that gives you a little uh, refresher on our physics and such about dive tables and the physics and such and the algorithms that are in your dive computer that make dive computers so friendly to use. And of course, even though I've been diving a while, and I understand tables, I much prefer using my dive computer. Like I really enjoy my single hose regulator over the old double hose regulators that were out there. Now, if you're new here, please reach down and hit the subscribe button. Love to have you subscribe. We're headed to 4,000 subscribers and love for you to be one of those. So again, I'm Bob Collins for Diver Supply. And as we always say, dive safe out there. Thanks for watching.